53. Mark Schlereth, three-time Super Bowl champ, multiple-time Pro Bowler. When stuff happens with Denver, he's a popular radio host of note in Denver in the morning. We always bring him on. Let's start with this. I thought, you know, there was a moment early, there was a quote by Seth Wickersham had it in an article that basically Sean Payton said to Russell Wilson, stop kissing babies. You're, you're not running for office. And to me, that like that was a moment of clarity. These are not the same guys. Sean's the anti-politician, sometimes inappropriate, harsh, and Russell's the ultimate politician. That stuck out to me as the moment that I kind of thought, it's not going to work. Was there a moment for you early that stuck out where you thought, yeah, this is clunky? Yeah, I think for the most part for me, Colin, it's when you actually start to break down the film and you see so many of the throws in the middle of the football field, anticipatory throws, in-cutting routes, where you've got to throw it with timing and anticipation that are there that are going to come open where Russell decides to pull the ball and scramble around. And those are the things that will drive you crazy as a coach who wants to be thrown on time with a purpose. And and so that that lack of schematic fit, yeah. right, that, that ability to pull the ball down when you are protected and scramble around and you end up taking sack after sack and you're, and you're putting yourself behind, you know, the chains, those are the things that don't necessarily jive well with, obviously, with Sean Payton. He wants precision. He wants execution. He wants a Drew Brees type of quarterback who can function and who can process information in, a, in just a, a split second and make the right decision. And those are not things that are part of Russell Real, Wilson's skill set. So the, when you start watching the film, you realize, wow, this is not this does not mesh very well. So if somebody, let's say Kirk Cousins leaves Minnesota, uh, let's say Pittsburgh uh, can look at tape. What would you give me some positives with Russell? Because I never bought he was washed. I just think he's mm -hmm. the latest mobile quarterback. Donovan McNabb's an example that aged quickly. Cam Newton aged quickly. Sometimes more yeah. mobile guys do. What did he do that you looked at and thought, oh, that's serviceable. That does move because he did. He did finish right up there with Mahomes in terms of total touchdowns, up there with Mahomes and Lamar. I mean, he was up in that class. What does he do that you liked on film? Well, he still throws the deep ball exceptionally well. Um, his ability to extend plays, scramble around, and he's still got, you know, he's still got athleticism. He still has big-time arm talent. So none of that stuff. Um, is a derogatory statement on Russell Wilson. He's still got all those abilities. So I think to me, what you have to be able to do is you've got to be able to play stellar defense. You've got to be able to run the football exceptionally well. And when things break down, your initial read is done. You've got to give him opportunities to scramble around and make plays. You've got to have a great kind of second schedule throw, meaning, hey, when things break down or your quarterback pulls it and scrambles around, now you got to get on the run and you've got to go make plays outside the parameters of the route combinations that we actually put in. So those things he still does really well. Um, and in that style of offense and in that style of football team, that's got a stellar defense. I think you'd be very successful. Um, you know, they have a, a pick, a 12th pick. Uh, I always think Bo Nix because of the way he plays, he's drew Brees with mobility, highly accurate at Oregon. A lot of stuff was schemed up for him, but that's what Sean Payton likes. All scheme it up, you deliver it, move if you have to. But you like J.J. McCarthy, uh, the Michigan kid who is flying up the draft boards, according to multiple mm -hmm. sources now. what What is it about McCarthy you like and know? Well, but he's one of one when it comes to pre-snap recognition and, a, and an NFL-style pre-snap offense. So you have to understand that college football has gotten to the point where it's very static formationally, right? They're going to get you in spread three by one, three by two empty, whatever the case may be. And you're going to basically not have progression throws, but you're going to pick your number one target. And you're going to say, that's the guy I want to throw it to. He's my best matchup. And you're going to throw it to that guy. And so there's no real uh, there's no real progression. You know, I talked to Bill Lazor, who's with the Houston Texans, about quarterbacks and picking quarterbacks, and he said something very poignant to me. It's not about who the best college quarterback is. It's about who's the best college quarterback with the most transferable skills. So J.J. McCarthy is probably the only guy that runs 
an NFL pro style offense at the line of scrimmage, meaning he's got different personnel groupings. He's calling plays. He's not just looking to the sideline going, okay, what do those cards say? Oh, it's barn chicken rooster. Let's go barn chicken rooster on two. That's not what they're doing in Michigan. It's a pro style pre-snap. You're motioning. You're in charge of flexing tight ends and motioning them across the formation and, and using that information pre-snap to understand where you want to go with the football. This is why, in my mind, he's climbing up draft boards because he's the only guy that's responsible for the line of scrimmage. And you got to think about how it works in the NFL. Your ability to call a huddle and your ability to make that call so you may get into, hey, we're going to fly to trips right, nasty, H left, outside, two jet, you know, two jet branch, Buffalo, can that with 18 handoffs, uh, 18 handoffs strong. And to be able to spit all that stuff out and to know exactly what that is and then to be able to change that formation and fly into that trips right and to see what the defense and how they respond to that. He's the only guy in this draft that's doing that pre-snap. So he's got that advantage coming into an NFL offense where the other college quarterbacks, like I said, look at the the, the sideline pictures and say, hey, bar chicken rooster on two, let's go. It's, it's a different deal. And he's the one guy that has, to me, the most pre-snap transferable skills to the National Football League. If you could take, if I sized all these people up and I said, uh, Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins, um, you know, and I put some of these guys out there, Baker Mayfield. We were talking about it this morning. It's possible that Russell Wilson would take like two million bucks a year. If you were a team that watched Denver, you see a regressing sort of, you know, uh, ad-libbing quarterback that can't ad-lib quite as much. Again, very much Donovan McNabb, never considered great pocket guy, but an athlete as the athleticism dips. It's not quite the same feel, but for that kind of money, would you, if you ran a team, say, I'm paying two, three million, Kirk would be 40, I'd take Russ. Would you do it then? Yeah, I think if, if the other, like, if you don't have the cap space and you can't make, you can't pull that off, and you have a great team around him, like I said, that you can take pressure, you can run the football, you can set up your play pass and your play action stuff, you can boot him out to the edge, and then you've got guys in that wide receiver room that are big-time beasts that have the ability to change and alter their routes based upon when things break down, then, then yes. Uh, like, I would say, yeah, that would, be, that would be the style with which you're going to have to play. But also the thing you're going to have to understand is we've got to play these close games because Russ is going to put himself in harm's way at least half a dozen times a game. He's going to take four or five sacks that are his responsibility off a three-step drop where he decides, no, I don't like that slant. I'm going to pull out here and I'm going to take a sack. You know, not that he's trying to take a sack, but, you know, the edge players in today's, I mean, look at the draft. The edge players in today's game are running four four forties, right? Like you can't outrun the edge like you did even 10 years ago. So there's a different dynamic there. So you're going to have to be okay with, hey, we're going to play good enough defense where we can manage some of these negative plays where some teams are just flat not good enough to overcome those negative plays because they don't have enough defense or offensive weaponry to do that. All right. Mark Schlereth, as always, checking in Bronco stuff. Russell Wilson now, open market. Thanks, Mark. You got it, buddy. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.